hello yes. everyone. Welcome to Laugh and Learn with Flay Monroe, Lauren Hogan, and Nick <laughs> Smith, who's coming in later. We uh, we appreciate you guys coming in. We know we're a little late, but I was changing my heart. <sighs> I had to get a perm. And I had to pee. So. <laughs> <laughs> but other than things. that, we look good. We smell good. I feel good. Feel it, Lauren. Feel it. Oh, you're oh, in the studio God. now. Oh, you were God. missed last week. Did y'all miss me? I was here. No, you were virtual. Like, you weren't here with I me. Wasn't so even, it was I wasn't even on the planet last Monday. Let me just say that. I, y'all yes. figured that one out. I was yes. there, but I was, yeah. You were love loungy for laughing. No loud. matter how high. <laughs> no matter how high I get. <laughs> I still be looking up to you. I was looking up to y'all last week because I was no, I was feeling groovy. That's there the we word. go. You were feeling okay. Groovy. What are we doing, Lauren? Where are we going? Well, first of all, how was your weekend? My what? week was good. How was Easter? Easter? Like, let's Easter let the was people very know. Very quiet. Uh, I made mashed potatoes and and short ribs and what else? And corn on the cob that I burned. Oh, not you burned upstairs. it. I burned the corn on the cob. I Ooh. went upstairs. I was on the phone. I forgot, so I smelled it. See. <laughs> Uh, bring Nick in. We want to thank you guys for joining us. Uh, Lauren, wait a minute. How was your week, Lauren? Um, my weekend actually was good. I ended up. Did you cook? <laughs> no, I did not cook. Very um, I wasn't really. We weren't really celebrating Easter. I'm just going to be honest. I had to work on Saturday, and um, we did this uh, food giveaway in Compton. And we gave away 15,000 pounds of food, to, and we fed about 500 families. So that wow, was my. That was pretty dope. Yeah, that was my Easter um situation so i was pretty happy with that i did that instead of cooking and that's okay with me were the people grateful oh yeah yeah it was it was a really amazing event we had a dj we had our testing truck out there it was really good testing for corona hiv testing oh oh, oh. makes you make make when you give away food to people that's homeless or hungry and all that it makes you be a little more grateful don't it yeah it, it does. does it, it really, really does. does and it was it was a drive through the, the hey, line of cars lined up for six blocks hey, so it was good you know i'm waiting on lauren to tell me lauren usually break it down nick back up is no you're good I'm trying to you're good <laughs> this one opens up. okay this one's i think okay. i got to oh, figure okay. it out yeah you look good nick how are you uh, lauren would you do me a favor Mm -hmm. Would you, I'm doing all right, but do me a favor. Grab the woman to your left and make sure she's not trying to run off to the talk. Because I saw a couple of pictures ah. this week where somebody looked like a talk show host. <laughs> well, since I'm on the right, she must be. he must be talking about Tribble. Because I'm on the right. <laughs> it's Tribble, you got to do You ain't tell us, girl. It's smeared. Oh, the, 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 the producer's <laughs> leaving us, y'all. Tribble, you going somewhere? <laughs> she I said just no. wanted them to see what I would look like if I was sitting in the mi middle of the talk table. I would look like Sharon Underwood or Cheryl Osborne. You know, I'm just saying. Sharon Underwood <laughs> or Cheryl Osborne. I could do, do that job, CBS, and would raise the level of that show to yeah. you have no idea. I agree with you. I definitely agree with you on that. But y'all will have to run so my change, baby. So not seen those photos, I definitely suggest they go to your IG page and take a look at those. Because, Flame, you did. You look fantastic. Thank you, Nick. Really did. Before we get started, I just have to ask, did y'all feel that earthquake here in Los Angeles, California? I, there I, were two. I, when I, I tell I you I was it. sleeping and all of a sudden it was like a jolt and I woke up twice, I was like, okay, listen, it, it, was, it was a lot. I normally enjoy earthquakes. I just don't like being woken up out of my sleep. Oh, um, well. Um, it was I, I can't it was agree a with shaker. you on that one, My bed was shaking last night. I didn't know it was an earthquake, but I had company. My, but my bed was <laughs> damn so shaking. I want y'all to know. <laughs> it was Easter. I had to resurrect the dead. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh, I'm still standing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I just want y'all to know what we're doing. Nicholas, how was your week? What did you do for Easter? Because I know you're there alone. What you do? I, I, I am alone, but you know, oh. I went ahead and finalized plans. I told you I'm going um, uh, Mother's Day weekend. I'm headed to Chicago go to see my mama. Yes. So we kind of uh, locked that down. And we started the day with the Easter phone call and just a lot of laughs, you know, laughing about, you know, how you can talk to, I can talk to you about some of the same things. We still laugh, you know, about things we've talked about a thousand times. And that's exactly what my mother and I did. We just talked about different things and, and just reflected, you know, uh, funny, quick story. We were just talking about how uh, you just remember how when you were kid used to get the new Easter suit and all that different stuff and how just things have just changed now that they don't even think about you, you wear whatever you have now you're not running out to get a new Easter suit I miss know. the Easter egg hunts when you had money in it the money in the eggs um, that's what I miss I never had one of those where she live right, right, okay right, where she grew up <laughs> California we, we was lucky to get sure. one jelly bean not a couple of jelly beans <laughs> one jelly bean well, you know, your school did it, and then you had, like, friends. You came together. You got your yeah. Easter egg hunt. Yeah. So, but anyway, I didn't do anything for Easter. My uh, Lauren, hmm. Nicholas, I feel like I want to yes. sneeze, but I'm scared to sneeze. 
Listen, can we let's see if we can move the camera. Look, y'all see how Flame is sitting today? I just want to oh, show attention. So let me give y'all the backstory. If Flame story sneezes, this the dress. dress is gonna unzip, okay? This is not the dress that's on the pictures that I took. This is an additional dress that might made me out some different polka dot. I'm in a polka dot phase right now. Just just you hear me. I'm on a polka dot run. So the zipper in here does not have a lock on it. So this was the dress that I was gonna wear on the talk show that you saw me do last morning, point of last Monday, point of view. But my girlfriend tried it on and broke the zipper. But this zipper is so tight that if I sneeze, it's going to pop. So I had to put a bra on with it today. This is where my <laughs> boobs look enormous. If I sneeze, y'all going to get a big old showing. So I'm going to have to put my cash app up. So if I sneeze, cash up, we can go to a strip show, Deborah. Come on, run it. Down in the valley where the girl. No, oh, I love this song. I'm sorry. It's one of those days. I'm sorry, Nick. If, Let us if get that's back. the case, Lauren, <laughs> Lauren, can we can we make sure that Kendall gets a hazard pay? If that's indeed the case, why you gotta bring that up? Kendall likes pretty, yeah. like pretty boobs. <laughs> not, not, now you, now they, he might not like them attached to him, but he definitely <laughs> likes pretty boobs. We have already talked about it. Play oh. <laughs> Kendall's in the corner laughing. He's laughing in the corner. Oh wow. <laughs> Hey, guys, I do want to start. Uh, I do want to let you all know we had a bit of breaking news here in Arkansas uh, where the governor, believe it or not, refused to sign. He vetoed the bill, the anti-trans bill uh, that was floating through the House really? here, uh, HB 1570. He said it was an extreme overreach, and he believes that trans youth deserve access to health care. I'm going to just say this. I think more and more we are seeing that people are nervous about being on the wrong side of history. People don't want to be labeled as racist. Look at what ha what's happening in Georgia with Governor Kemp. Yeah. I just think that, you know, we're starting we're going to start to see a shift in a lot of ways because people just don't want to be on the wrong side of history. And more importantly, they want to get reelected. That's what's that's the bottom line. And the yeah. GOP as a whole is not showing that they're um, a party for the people. So you might have some outliers starting to just kind of step back a little bit from the GOP. That's my thoughts. Trans youth uh, health care, would that consist of mental? Because I don't mm. understand what a youth would need trans health care for unless it was a mental capacity to talk about how you feel it. Because I'm damn sure not signing up for trans youth taking hormone therapy of, of any age unless you have went through puberty and you've experienced some things to know that you are sure of this because that is not a do-over. Once you start, you grow boobs, you shrink your penis from the from the trans woman's perspective. As a trans man, your clit gets enormous. You mess with your uh, count of possibly having children. It does things to your female internal. So I'm, I'm asking because I want to know, are you talking about health care for the youth? And I'm only thinking mental. I'm not thinking, uh, right. you know, taking any kind of medication or anything because I think you're just not ready for that. And I'm saying that from experience. Flame, as it stands right now, the governor definitely believed that those were decisions that needed to be between the patient and their parent, mm. not the state mandating anything. Some of these so parents are not in control. Let me just say that. They well, want to please their kids. My kids, I want to please my kids too, but a no is a whole answer. And the last four words, I'm sorry, Lauren, I know you you're could, coming. You the last four words to know when they say, but why? Because I said so. All parents say it and it works. Well, I think what's going to be interesting, too, is because I don't I don't know if this is mandated across the country, but like just speaking from personal experience, I know once, once you reach a certain age, your parent no longer is technically allowed to be in the room with you when you see a doctor unless you give them permission. And I think the age is like 13, at least it's here in California. I don't know if that's mm. the mandate across the board, but technically in mm. this situation, based on, you know, the governor signing this bill, it may not be up to the parents in terms of what type of, you know, yeah. care these kids mm. want to get because their parents don't have to be in the room. Mm. So, well, I know that Flame wanted to start the show a particular way uh, before we dive on in. Flame? You already met, you already took me somewhere else. You got me on the LGBT, <laughs> ABCDFG, PTSD, ABCQGR, KEP, FNBG. Secondly, I want to say congratulations to Nisi Nash and her wife. I watched their interview on, since we're doing LGBT, we might as well cover all of it now. Because I ain't coming back to this shit. Uh, <laughs> Uh, Nisi Nash, who married her wife, uh, Jessica Botts. Botts, yes. And the girl, the wife knows me because oh. she used to come to the drag shows, they say, in Chicago. I don't remember meeting her, but I'm telling you, I hosted drag shows for so long. So many people know more of me than I know of them. But it was a good interview. Uh, mm -hmm. Nisi Nash said that she had never thought about being with a woman, and she met this woman, and yeah. she married her. <laughs> Let me let me say that again. She said she never had thought about being a woman, and then she met this woman, and she married her. 
Everybody's experience is I different. I have not said a fucking word. Yes, you Mrs. did. Oak. I just yes, gave a did. look. <laughs> I understand getting you some and laying down and liking it, but marrying it, hey, ooh, either either Bets had it fire, or or Nisi ain't never had fire. <laughs> now, which one is it? Anyway, what, oh. were the other, what were the other LGBTQ No, no, points? wait a minute, because I got to go back to, because, um, uh, what's her name? Jada Pinkett Smith says she thought about it, but she's never been with a woman. Oh, I saw that too. I have absolute. Okay, what, what's the first topic, Nick? <laughs> uh, I do want to kind of jump in. I do want to mention how um, it bro- broke last week after we finished. The NFL has approved a 17-game season, and I know that there are a whole lot of people who are excited about that to get a chance to, uh, you know, um, Get one more extra game in there, and the NFL, of course, will uh, find a way to. Is it NFL or was it the Major League Baseball? Because Major League Baseball made some major announcement too, didn't they? Well, I think as a whole, sports has kind of shifted. Um, The NFL is doing the 17 game season. Even the NBA right now, they're they shortened their season by I think about like 30 games because they're trying to basically get everything Mm. back on track in terms of what their normal seasons look like. So they don't have this run over anymore, and then players can actually like rest and rejuvenate because it seems like at least for the NBA, some of these players are. Especially like the Lakers, for instance, are a little injury prone because they won the championship. They were in the bubble the longest. So I think as a whole, MLB, NFL, NBA, they're just trying to get their schedules back on track. So that's what we're really trying to see. What we're going to be seeing, I should say. Also, I just wanted to kind of throw out there, you know, uh, another thing that happened last week after we got off the air. Uh, Major Biden. Uh, once again, bit somebody. So I'm trying to think, what do we do? Uh, because Flame, you and I have talked about this. A rescue is definitely the way to go. But do you think we have a problem with Major Biden? This is like the second time he's been involved in a biting incident. Who bit someone? Uh, Joe Biden's dog. Oh. Was it? Wait a minute. Was it? Demo- Remember that's- Did he bite somebody? Was it Democrat or Republican? <laughs> it makes a difference. It's uh, seriously, it makes a difference. Did he buy somebody that was Republican? They can hear us. I do not. Oh, okay. I do not know. Oh, well, as long as I'm li- listen, mm-hmm. it's not who you buy. It's not how many you buy. It's, it's who, who you buy. Yeah. Oh, what's that? What's, what, that, movie, what's that movie from? What? Uh, that's saying Harlem Nights. Uh-huh. <laughs> Eddie Murphy, he said, it's not how many people you shoot. It's who you shoot. Uh-huh. I, I don't there want you, you to go. shoot nobody, there the you. dog. But listen, if you see something red and you decide to bite it. <laughs> Maybe they should have went blue. They should have worn blue. <laughs> I, I do want to uh, take a turn and give a serious shout out uh, to uh, DMX right now mm. because, uh, you know, we, we had talked about that. Um, Flame and I are a little bit older, so we've been following his music a whole lot longer. Don't like do I that. Can, uh, you know I'm an old soul, Nick. You know I'm an old soul. Shoot, I got music going back to the 50s. I listen to Frankie Lyman. Don't I know do that. one DMX song, Party Up. That's all I know. And all I know is, uh, um, tear it up is my favorite song. What's the one when you come up, bum 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 ba dum bum 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 bum? Move, yeah, that's all I know. What? And, yeah, his, <laughs> was it party up? And it starts off, bum ba dum bum. Is it called party up? I think so. That, yeah, it does. I think See, so. Triple yeah. with no triple in that age break. That and I Me only know that because age. I use that intro when I do rap numbers when I do a drag <laughs> shows. I don't know none of the words to that damn song. Yes, we are too. I do feel bad for and DMX I, I, though, and <laughs> it made me go back and rewatch him <laughs> on Ayanna Van Zandt when I thought he was going to jump on that lady. But um, I, I feel bad for DMX. I thought he had kicked the drug habit, but I guess not. Guess not. Yeah. Yeah, and I don't know if you got a chance to see it because I know that you watch Good Morning America, but CBS this morning played a little bit of the interview they had with um, Hunter Biden. And he was talking about his addiction and how he was smoking crack in hotel rooms and yes. he had really just gone off the deep end. It was uh, it, it was very revealing, to say the least, how he, he was just lost. Well, that, still sounds, about how he, that still sounds high end to me, smoking crack in a hotel room. You know how many people smoke cracks in abandoned buildings and gangways? So he was still like a step up above Jimmy in a full on crack here because he was in a hotel room, not in an abandoned building in an alley turning the trick. You know, I'm just saying. And I was gonna say, was it crack or was it cocaine? Because there's a difference. Is there a difference? Yes. Uh, it was. He was. He was definitely. He was definitely uh, talking about oh, smoking okay. crack. Yeah, and uh, going in areas uh, flame not too far off of um, Skid Row. 
you know, uh, trying oh, to downtown. score and everything there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, he was, he was he just, he was really gone, really mm-hmm. gone. Wonder, I um, wonder what he was searching for, because, you know, a lot of times they say when you want to get high, you're searching for it too. You're trying to forget or you're trying to release a pain or get away from it or what have you. He talked about a that a trauma. little bit. Yeah. He said that he never, he said that when his mother and sister were killed, Everybody knew about it, but they never discussed it. Mm-hmm. So it was always there. No, like nobody ever talked to him about, you know, your mom was killed. Your, uh, your sister is dead now. And, and like because they just moved on, you know, and uh, everybody, all attention went to his father who had lost his wife and child. But nobody talked to the children mm-hmm. and that he said he just struggled. And then when his brother, when he lost his brother, he was done uh, when he lost his, uh, when he lost his brother to um to cancer he was like it was, it was just over he just started Sup- getting high. Sup- suppressed trauma is real mm. um I, i'm just saying for me yeah. like i know yeah. i'm not one to talk about my emotions and how i'm feeling i'm i'm very much so have walls up so i can understand how having some like catastrophic and just traumatic events like that in your life and not being able to work through them emotionally how that could drive you to something yeah. like that that's a that's hard it's definitely escape to want to get high because when y'all come to love lounge and i've been feeling groovy my daughters have probably worked my nerves for the day or stressed out, <laughs> so I've had me a little. But not, I'm not not that kind of drug. But it's still a drug, so I can't. I'm not bashing nobody, but I do yeah. also think again. I'm going to say because we've had this conversation before about addiction. Addiction at a certain age is a choice. So I just like I choose to drink, eat edibles. They chose to do what they got to do. I know sometimes you can't escape from it, but. They got programs and people that supposedly be able to help you. But if you keep going back to the same situations and the same predicaments, you're going to do the same shit. Ain't that what they say? Keep doing the same thing and expecting different results. I put on this yeah, hair. I thought this hair was going to act insanity. right, but it ain't acting yeah. right. So, yeah, it's, it's a different result. Fun. You like my hair, Lorraine? Mm-hmm. You want to borrow it? Nice. You want to borrow it? There are, <laughs> there are two more things I'm going to throw out there, you guys, because since we're just talking about it and we'll get on. But you also mentioned last week as we were going off the air flame. I'm like, what is Flame and Lauren talking about? That Tina Turner documentary. Oh, I you watched that it? Was absolutely. Oh, Lauren, I, t- I went on and on Flame next day. Call- uh-huh. Flame literally said to me, Nick, don't call me at six in the morning. You really need something to do. Uh, you are clearly. <laughs> I, w- I was I was that I was I was I was shaken. I was excited. I was I was mo- I've always liked Tina, but I was like, yeah, but something about and this is what Flame and I talked about. There's something about having the, the person tell their story in their own voice, in their own words. Mm-hmm. Lauren, it was fantastic. Absolutely yeah. fantastic. One of the best things I've seen. And the Broadway musical, too. I know Broadway is, like, coming back in the next couple of months. I'm really excited. Um, the Tina Broadway show, Tina on Broadway, is coming back, too. So if you guys are in New York or if you end up, you know, traveling there, I really encourage you to go see the Broadway musical of it as well because it's just as good. And the cast is absolutely phenomenal. So between me watching the, the musical first last December and then I actually saw this documentary, it's just I've always had a lot of respect for her just as, you know, artists yeah. and performers in general. So I'm, I'm glad you got to watch it. But, yeah, it's definitely a must-see. Yeah. Yeah, I recommend it for everyone. Five for five, Nick. That's five things I have recommended to you, dear, and that you've enjoyed. Uh huh. Oh, you never, you never, you've never steered me wrong with that. I think we are more aligned on uh, movies and everything. I, I just get, I'm slow to get there sometimes. You know, you got every, every channel too. <laughs> and the only watches I don't have the full pack. <laughs> and only watches two of them. I watch three. Oh, okay, three. Sorry. I watch CNN. I watch American movie, T- Turner movie classic, and American movie classic. Okay, so three. I was close. And I sometimes said two. I watch the uh, cooking. No, I watch All the right. twin brothers that sell real estate. The oh, two Property cute. Brothers. Oh, they I cute. love that too. I like the one with the beard, not the one without the beard. Jonathan. Uh, see, I don't okay. even know the names, but I know they twins. See, and I'm in love. I'm in love with. I'm in love with uh, Chip and Joanna. Really. Chip I love bugs. Chip and Joanna. With the, the Chip eats bugs. I'm just like, mm. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Lauren, where are we going? We're going Let's start the show. Let's get into the topics. We ended up, you know, having a whole little segment beforehand. But and that's and fine. I'm glad we did because we're about know. to go. We're about to get into some shit, y'all. And I'm yeah. telling you right now, if you ain't braced for it and you ain't ready for it, you probably should want to leave, laugh, and learn right now and just wait till it come back out on audio when they can edit some shit. Because we're about to go real deep and real hard. That's to be the second time in the last 24 hours I did that. <laughs> wait a minute. What happened? <laughs> Let's start with the topics, Nick. <laughs> Where are we going, Lauren? Where are we starting with? We are going to start with Flame's favorite Manny Petty state of Florida, right? Ooh. And their representative <laughs> that is in Florida that is uh, experiencing a bit of a... 
A sex scandal. Matt Gates is a slut and he's messing around <laughs> with little kids. I see it. What the fuck? I see it. Uh, and he is. If you don't know what Manny Petty means, that means you're not a lounge yet. You've never been to the Love Lounge. I call Florida the Manny Petty State because all the Mannies run there because they all a lot of them are petties. I don't know why so many pedophiles run to Florida. It is just like open season for pedophiles in Florida. I think yeah. they stay up under the radar running to Florida. I don't know what that is, but Matt Gates has definitely been caught. Well, not caught. He's been widely accused. Hasn't of, he been indicted at this point? Or has, has, has that it been not indicted yet? yet? Not yet. Oh, okay. <clears throat> of sleeping with underage girls, taking them across he, he state not. lines, showing new, 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 lewd and lascivious pictures on the damn Congress floor. He's just a man. And always uses looking at his daddy to get him out some shit. I'm telling y'all, Florida, y'all need to change y'all voting habits because I don't know who the hell y'all be voting for. I just think that this Matt Gates situation has so many layers to it. It's like a new discovery as brought to the light every day, uh, especially because some of the people, well, one of his associates he's, he's linked to in terms of, I guess, the fraud or money laundering or fraud or whatever, he's already been, Has indicted. been indicted. Right. Yes. So it's like only yes. a matter of time. And they were just building, they've been just building and building this case against him. So. And this is what's also Oof. interesting, Lauren. I guess at one point, in, according to MSNBC, uh, the Florida, Florida congressman also allegedly asked women to help recruit others who might be interested quote in having sex with him and his friends mm. separately and collectively um so the and should the potential recruits uh turn witness you know this would be uh, more evidence against uh, or or you know but right now he has not been charged with the crime i just want to make sure that we're clear there mm -hmm. um, but the a allegations uh against uh gop matt gates uh continue uh to mount and they are becoming more serious and they caught one of his friends right the, mm -hmm. uh, okay one understand that, that black don't mm -hmm. crack but white ain't tight, because when I tell you that the friend about to tell it all, white ain't that tight. Wait. If you don't believe me, go back to January the 6th. They own kids was tricking on them. White ain't that tight. White black don't crack. Uh -huh. I got to bring something up, though. <laughs> did you guys see the interview that Matt Gates did with Tucker Carlson? I saw some Where of he, it. Okay, so Matt yeah. Gates literally tried to make Tucker Carlson a witness <laughs> in, his, in his whole freaking... Uh, in, in, a indictment that's coming down on him he tried to make tucker carlson a witness and tucker straight up said um i have no idea what you're talking about and i said you better deny, right. deny oh you deny. know you remember you remember tucker you remember tucker we were at the party together you in fact you met her you remember when we were down tucker sat right there and said i don't know what I, you're I, talking about i have no idea what you're talking about <laughs> he should have bust out said nigga deny, you ain't finna deny. set me up you ain't finna get me caught up in your way of a foolishness and Matt Gates is a uh, director of communications has since resigned, this. and it's it's not looking good for him. It's really not. His daddy got plenty of money. He'll buy him out. No, nah, there's only there's only so much that I, your daddy I, can do <laughs> on this one. There's only so much. Right. Because even Bill Barr is stepping and away I understand from him. That Yes, and I understand the story becomes more and more convoluted and, and it's not easy to follow and, and, and the explanations don't all add up. It is worth watching, so we will keep an eye on mm -hmm. that one for sure. For sure. And I just want to throw this out there. Isn't it interesting? All of these other stories have come up with Matt Gates. There's been the Jim Jordan thing. Anybody heard anything about Andrew Cuomo? It's like all of a sudden all these allegations disappeared. Lauren, what did I tell you? I, there's always a bigger story around the corner. Like I was telling Flame, literally, literally after we were talking about Asian hate, I said we need to focus on it now because there will be a bigger story. We had the shooting. Now, you, there's just there's always I remember and I'm just going to make this quick sideway um, back when Chandra Levy went missing mm -hmm. years ago. Nicholas, why you be going? Why you be going? Why you be doing that? Why you be going somewhere else? And I ain't be ready to go there. Why you <laughs> Rosetta? No, I'm just joking. Go ahead, Come on. Because who, who was that who made no, him it was disappear? Just, Wasn't it a congressman or governor? Where, Right, yeah. and he, he would not do an interview. Yeah. He wouldn't talk. He wouldn't talk, and and they kept, he, the kept the the thing is, had he just kept his mouth shut, mm. he finally did an interview with Connie Chung, who was an anchor at the time. He was so condescending and nasty to Connie, and that's all everybody remembered. Literally two days later, we had nine eleven, and nobody was talking about Chandra Levy anymore. And it was like one of those things where had he just kept his mouth closed, because there's always a bigger story around the corner. And it turns out he did not kill Chandra Levy, but he is still forever tied to Chandra Levy. And he, of course, lost re-election and all that and went back to California with his head between his legs. But yeah, his tail between oh, his, his legs. His head between his yep. legs. Woo. Connie Chung. That's Connie. a wide no. way to walk back. I remember Connie, Connie Chung. Right <laughs> after that, she got controversial. 
picture with Bill Clinton's mother and said that and let the re audio be released that Bill Clinton's mother called Hillary Clinton a, a B I T C H, and we ain't heard so. from Connie Chung since. Cause some shit mm -hmm. you gonna hold or they gonna <laughs> fold you. Did, did she not listen to Kenny Rogers? You gotta know when to hold them and know no. when to fold them. She thought she was gonna get some brownie points. She did. It Blame. was called uh, Just Sharon Osbourne. We gonna bag you out. Uh, just like that one reporter, and I can't think of his name now. Do you remember the one who said that they were pimping Chelsea? Remember that? He was at, uh, at NBC. He made some derogatory comment about Chelsea Clinton and how Oosh. Bill and Hillary had her out there on the stomp. I mean, they, they booted him. We have not seen him. He went. Good. They must have confused somewhere. him with uh, Trump and Ivanka. There must have been some confusion. <laughs> See, and I didn't say it, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> She is so bad, y'all. She is so bad. Okay, what we were, Matt Gates. I don't, I don't even know what they're gonna do. I just think that it seems to be something always affiliated with so many of these pub Republican men and pedophilia. Not all, not all. Before y'all get to jumping down my throat, but I don't know. It's a lot of it. It's a lot of it. Yeah. Like a kid. I'm like, you can go buy whatever you want. They selling anything you need for a small fee. But get it of, of age, not underage. Oh my God! The least you can go is. It like is also alleged. It is also alleged that in Tallahassee, while it's still there, uh, that they had a running scorecard where they kept scores on women and the number of women different lawmakers could sleep with. Um, and th there was a pool that at the end of the year, uh, w someone would would end victorious. Uh, the sex competition in Tallahassee uh, has has been alleged for years during the 2020 feud with former colleagues uh information came out and like you mentioned flame uh there are reports that he would show pictures on uh two other lawmakers on mm -hmm. the senate floor uh showing them hey this is who i'm, I'm with and look at this video that we shot and so people want to know who are these people that you showed this video to as well and why haven't they come forward to say hey this is inappropriate or don't do that <laughs> Oh, all these lawmakers are about to go down, these Republicans. Poor thing. Okay, well. Poor thing. He ain't that important. I hope they catch his nasty ass. I said what I said. Tell the nigga to call me. Uh, <laughs> can we get to uh, what's real important right now? That when we turn on the news and watch it, we, everybody's in a place. Oh, the Derek Chauvin trial? The, the George Floyd trial. Because Derek Chauvin is not on trial here. The only person yeah. on trial here is George Floyd. What do you mean by that, Flame? Because Break that's that down all for they're bringing up is everything that George Floyd did. Everything is what George Floyd did in his past. His past stopped on the day he died. His past stopped. Y'all still going into old stuff. This man that killed him right in our faces. Put this nigga on the stand. That's I put Derek Chauvin on the stand and then give me a prosecutor with some balls. I ain't talking about with regular balls either. I'm talking about that is not afraid to hold him accountable and show him what he did. He can't watch it when they show it in the courtroom. He put his head down or he start writing or he look away. Make that nigga look at what he did because that's the deed that he did. He created this Frankenstein monster. He killed this man on purpose. And now he don't want to look at it. That's the same effect as Frankenstein. We create a monster, then we don't want to face what we created. Nigga, look at you killing this man. They need to stop the tape right there where he got his hand in his pocket, his knee on that man's neck, and he's looking dead into the camera that the young person was taping him with the smirk on his face and stop it right there and say, right now, at this moment, look at it. Don't turn away. What were you thinking? Make that nigga answer. Hold him accountable. You hold us accountable for everything. Hold that fool accountable because guess what? He killed that man. Ain't no ain't no roundabout, second degree, third degree. And they say it wasn't pre premeditated. He had a history with this man. He knew this man long before now. He was just waiting for an opportunity to show up to where he could institute the rage or hate or bitterness or anger, whatever he felt towards this man. He got the opportunity and he used it and he killed him. Do I think that he meant to kill him? No, but he did. So nigga, you go to prison. I think he meant to kill him. I think so. I think he meant to get him as close to death as he could without killing him. No, I think he meant to kill him. Well, he did. One, I will say this. I think that it's unfortunate that, to Flame's point, that George Floyd is the one that's on trial. Mm -hmm. It's his life. He has to, you know, the prosecutors have to bring up his girlfriend and Courtney Ross and his past drug addiction and all of these different things that he was going through and how, you know, oh, he didn't know that it was a $20 bill. They're trying to justify mm -hmm. his actions and of what occurred throughout his life to get to this day. 
And that's not what we should be doing. We should be addressing the fact that Derek Chauvin had his knee intentionally on this man's neck because like everybody else, I've been watching this trial. I've seen everybody from the lieutenant come on. The police chief was on today or was on uh, the stand today who had fired him. And they all said that there's a process and procedure to follow. And there are certain steps that they take to determine, you know, an unconscious restraint versus a conscious restraint and what deems those things to be implemented based on your surroundings and what's happening at a scene. And throughout everyone's testimony, it's been very clear that he used excessive force and that he did this intentionally. They had a history before. And if you intentionally put your knee on somebody's neck, not for eight minutes and 46 seconds, but for nine minutes and 29 seconds, what did you think the end result was going to be other than death? You can't just think that doing that, nothing was going to happen. Yeah, That's the intent right there. On Friday, Lieutenant Richard Zimmerman, the longest serving officer in the Minneapolis Police Department, offered a scathing condemnation of Mr. Chauvin's use of force. He said that Mr. Chauvin violated police policy and called his actions totally unnecessary. But more important to that, too, which is I think we didn't see because so many different video and camera angles have come out now. While Derek Chauvin had his knee on George Floyd's neck, he was also he was pulling his hands up behind his back while he was handcuffed. He was restricting airflow. That was intentional to have restricted airflow to somebody. What were you what did you think was going to happen other than you cut off somebody's um, oxygen to the point that they can't breathe anymore and then they're obviously going to die? What else did you think was going to happen? Lieutenant Zimmerman said if your knee is on a person's neck, that can kill them adding that people who are handcuffed generally pose little threat to officers. Mr. Zimmerman's testimony bolstered by his more than 35 years on the force could be a major setback for a crucial aspect of Mr. Chauvin's defense. And I am quoting here from the New York Times. I'll just say this with all of the damning testimony that's come out from, like we said, the Lieutenant Zimmerman, the police chief that testified today, the coroner that testified today and said that his death was related to asphyxia and not related to um, an overdose on drugs. Um, the previous uh, fire medic that came out that was a bystander, every uh, Darnell Williams, every all of these different witnesses and um, key experts, because I feel like we can call them at this point, are testifying that this was excessive force and that he murdered George Floyd. If y'all don't convict Derek Chauvin and make sure he gets sentenced... Y'all better be ready because there's going to be some riots that erupt. There's no way that not he that can we be. Not that we want that. Not that we want that, but I'm just saying that's going right. to be the reality of it. Yeah. Specifically because this entire trial has been televised. It is. We all can mm -hmm. watch it. And every major mm -hmm. network, probably except for Fox, is airing this. Lauren, I also think, you know, and this is just my own personal opinion. I think the reason this also resonates so much is because we were all on lockdown when this happened. So we all seem like I feel like we've all been part of this journey uh, from the actual uh, police confrontation that resulted in Mr. Floyd's death to uh, where we are now watching this trial, which seemed to me to uh, take longer than, you know, um, uh, then I don't know. I, it seemed, and again, I'm, I don't have a legal background, but it seemed fairly cut and dry to me that there was something wrong with what happened with the uh, George Floyd's um, uh, unfortunate death that it could have moved a little bit faster. That's just my opinion, that uh, the fact that we're just now starting this trial, we're only in week two of a trial that I feel like last year was pretty cut and dry well, I from the optics. I think, too, though, that the the district attorney was trying to really make sure that they built a concrete case because I don't think that they wanted a repeat of a Rodney King, you know, right. 1992 right. trial where we had the video evidence. You could see everything was there. It's like, okay, we finally got these cops and then they all got off. So I think that because our, like I say, you know, the, the climate of the world is always important. And this particular instance was probably on an even greater scale because like you said we were on lockdown so it got international coverage there were international protests we didn't so much see that with you know the rodney king um brutal right. beating that he got it was more right. of a usa kind of thing but right because i think there's so much international attention brought around this the, di mm -hmm. the district attorney really wanted to make sure that they did their due diligence to build an airtight case you think, lauren because flame and i've had this conversation offline 
Are you confident, and I'd love to hear what Flame S have to say, are you confident in the case that the prosecution is putting forward? No, absolutely not. <laughs> Let me answer that for you. They started off like lions, and then they got soft. And here's the thing. I don't give a damn if the prosecution ain't in on it, but if the if the uh, um, defense is in on it, and, or they, and, and all the other police come out to say, oh, Derek Chauvin is a horrible police officer, he was a horrible human being, the fucking judge seems to be in on it. To me, this is my opinion. The judge, to me, is shooting down everything that the prosecutor is coming with. He also tried to belittle those youngsters when they came up there because that's what was there filming that and talking to him when it was happening was a bunch of youngsters. He tried to make them feel intimidated because, you know, we teach our children or we teach the youth to respect authority. So a robe, a police badge, somebody, a doctor, somebody in that position. He made them look kind of stupid, if you ask me. I think that the judge is biased to the case Leaning towards Chauvin, this is my opinion, and I wish that he would be removed because I am not li living for him. Not to say that he, it's not fair. That's what it's not. George Floyd didn't get a fair shake on, on his death date. He can't get a fair shake now because th that's who's on trial to me. They're finding everything wrong with George Floyd. Go into Derek Chauvin's past. Let's see how many people he has done this to and gotten away with, whether they're alive or dead. Let's see how many crimes that he has gotten away with. And let's see why he had such contempt towards George Floyd, because he had a reason not to like this man long before meeting him on that day. We know they worked together, but that's something else. The whole story is not out. Put this nigga on the stand so we can find out and get a prosecutor that can pull it up out of him. You know who they need? They need Alex Cabot from... Uh, from Law and Order SVU, bitch. Listen. The blonde. Oh, she'd get it. Oh, but listen, baby. I, <laughs> a couple of things. I'll say this. I do think that the judge is biased. But even even in like my experience of going to traffic court and you have the cop that shows up, there's a an unspoken rule is that the cop is always right. Whatever the situation is, especially when you're in a courtroom, no matter what the level or degree of, you know, you know what you're in court for so i think one that's really what we're seeing with the judge and i really do think that the judge is biased the prosecution however i'm actually i like the prosecution i think that the female prosecutor that they have she's really able to break certain things down and ask you know real targeted questions in an empathetic way that's not coming across aggressive or a way that you know the defense mm -hmm. can try and cross examine and make it seem like you know oh she's badgering witnesses or she's trying to you know curtail testimony i think she's doing a great job i think she's probably more so one of my favorites um I do think that Derek Chauvin's lawyer is terrible. I'm just going to say that. I don't think that he's... Uh, and how much money did they donate for him? A million bucks, right? Listen, I don't think that his attorney is that great. And, Flame, to your last point, I think that those of us that have watched crime shows like the Law & Order SVUs, the Blue Bloods, and those different... We're expecting to see a certain type of swagger and vigor, I think, with some of these attorneys. And we're not getting that at, at this point. And I think that's part of some of the opinions that are being formed in terms of the capabilities of these um lawyers that are in the courtroom i'll say that open it up okay well let's bring in some flame ants nick we're gonna bring, come back to you you give us some opinion y'all nicholas yes what do you think is going to happen I don't know. I really have no idea. I'm, um, I'm, I'm glued like everybody else. I just find it to be extremely emotional, and I think that it's, it's so heavy, and I'm just hoping that if children are watching, that there's an adult or someone to explain to them what they're seeing and why it matters that this is not okay. Again, hey, Dawn, how you doing? Uh, hey, Dawn. Again, hey. Back, again, back to the week before last when I told y'all some shit I don't want to see. I just don't want to see it because I can't, I can't turn it off. I can't get rid of it. It's, once it's in my psyche, it's there. And I'm like, uh, even when I ain't thinking about it, it just fucking pop up and something would trigger it. I'm sorry. Hi, Dawn. I just had to get that out. <laughs> I, 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 I don't want to watch. I don't want to watch nothing about the uh, trial. I don't want to see snippets of it. I don't want I don't want to see it because, like you said, George, I think Lauren might have said it. George Floyd is not on trial. He's deceased. Yeah. And they. And white people got a bad habit of doing that to us. Yeah. You know, we can be dead 50 years, but we we stole a piece of candy out the grocery store and we on trial for that. No, no. So I felt he intended to kill him. Um, like that. I did hear on the news that baby said uh, the nine year old said she believed. Uh, what did he say? She's he put more pressure on his neck. 
and the uh, prosecutor asked her, I think it was the prosecutor said, well, how do you know that? She said, because I saw him raise his back. Now, why? Look at the trauma that a nine-year-old has. She's going to forever remember that. Mm -hmm. So I don't want to see no more of this stuff about George Floyd. I hate that his life had to be sacrificed for, you know, to open people's eyes. But mm -mm, no, he's not on trial. I don't. Dawn, I do want to ask you that. Dawn, do you feel like more people are aware now of maybe uh, excessive force by police or uh, the disparities between different communities? Do you think that helped to shine a light on an area many people of color were already aware of? It's color? Everybody, it's, they it's already knew. They ain't about. The, uh, disparities because everybody knows how we're treated as a people. They know how we're treated as a people. He didn't have to put his neck, uh, his knee on that man's neck. Well, you know, why do you have to use excessive force with us? By nature, we're not a violent, we're not violent people. So why did you have to go that far with it? Because there's a bigger story to this, and we're going to get to the end of it. And, it's been, it's and, done. See, it's, and it's been, they've been doing this to us. Every time somebody, you know, police, they always shooting us. That You know, they always killing us. For what? You don't kill your own. But it goes to show you that they treat us like animals. They treat us like deer. They go hunting in the deer lease. That's oh. how they treat us. So I don't want to watch it. Damn, Damn Dawn. Wanna... Must you say it like that? I just I'm had a so... visual like, wow. I'm sorry, Flame, but you Ooh, know, I live. That was real. That's no, it was real, but it just that it just hit me when you but said it. But they treat it. us like animals. It's you know, I was looking at, I was Damn. looking at something. Um, um, I can't remember um, what I was looking at history and how they were throwing you know throwing water on people because they were just trying to vote so, you know shooting water on our ancestors because they just tried to vote so now you can't you may have you i've gotten false money from the bank you know i've gotten a fake 20 dollar bill 100 dollar bill from the bank am i trying to hustle somebody no i'm just trying to buy what i need to buy you know so, it's senseless it's ridiculous i don't want to watch it I pray that they find him guilty. See, I'm not going to be satisfied until the sentencing scene because mm -hmm. they're going to find him guilty. See, it's just like the little girl Amber in Dallas. I wasn't too thrilled because they found her guilty. I wanted to know the sentencing scene. And when she got 10 years, yeah. I said, shit, she mm. should have went home on probation. 10 years and the black judge came off the off the stand to and, give and her a hug her. and apologize well, that what? she actually had to give her the 10 For years. What? Well, the other part of that, too, is there's still an appeals process. Because if we're going to talk about Amber Geiger, exactly. she got the 10 years and then her attorney went back and appealed the sentencing and she got it reduced. So that's yeah. that. And that's what I've said, too, is that the conviction great the sentencing great but we got to look at the appeals process because look at the yeah because yeah. even if he does get convicted and sentenced i can already see this going into oh we need you to see, appeal it, this it, yeah because it you know what's the charge see you know every state has different laws mm -hmm. they get different charges so if he's convicted i can care less i want to hear if he gets 40 50 years okay well then i'm satisfied because at least he can serve 20 before he's up for uh appeal you well, know well the other oh, thing oh. i think too is to what flame's point is i as as we know now there have been i believe 17 other incidents of excessive force that is on Derek chauvin's jacket in terms yeah. of what he's been doing as a police officer so i'm waiting because we're only in week two we're still kind of early i'm waiting for him to officially go on trial but you know what though lauren to add to what you're saying is i've worked alongside police officers and when you have that type of uh record you're not supposed to be working because if but if it was us, because I know a couple of police officers black who lost their jobs because of the things they were doing. But the white guys, they kept uh, they kept working. And one or two particular one in particular, one guy killed himself. He committed suicide Good. because he was mentally ill. Mm -hmm. And another one shot himself it. and his wife. Mm. Sorry mm -hmm. about the wife, but good. But but you <laughs> see what I'm saying? Because they're mentally off. And again, you I keep saying this. Officer. Why y'all want to keep giving Lil Roger and Lil Jonathan, who y'all already knew was fucked up kids, crazy as kids, no, did nobody in the family want to deal with them? They they terrorize the mama, but because exactly. I'm the uncle and I'm gonna do something good, I'm gonna exactly. give the the job to. Uh, I'm gonna help Lil Johnny get a job as a police officer. So now you know you got this unbalanced fool. You didn't gave a badge to and a fucking gun and the right 
to kill anybody, mostly us, exactly. and you already racist, and you teach them racist. So now you done gave a racist retard a fucking gun. And I said retard. I'm not being politically correct. Is it politically correct when they kill us? You done gave yep. a racist fucking retard a gun and a reason and a, a, a getaway, get out of jail free car to kill exactly. us. You exactly. knew that nigga was nuts when y'all, when y'all, he was a little kid and he was burning the goddamn cat's tail at the stove or going and setting his mama's wigs in the room on fire. But y'all want to make him a police officer and release him to the world. We need to stop fat and fight with the people that help do that shit because guess what? Stop it at the root and we won't have to deal with it again. Exactly. I'm going to adopt me some white kids and grow my black. I know what the fuck I'm doing. And you oh, know man. what? Mm -hmm. And you know what? <laughs> These police officers, the the uh, captains, the chiefs, or whomever, they need to have people that live in the in the city. Don't live outside the city. You That's need to right. live within we the city. About that for police we we and, and you about that. To police your area, because you know, a long time ago, when you were a policeman, you knew the community, you knew everybody. But see, it's not like that anymore. They get these scary ass little white boys, and they put them in the project. Yeah, they already afraid of us, you know, and then they get to shoot, you know, somebody's mentally ill. We do have mental illness in the black community. We do. They don't think so. They think we just thugs. See, when they kill up a whole bunch of people because they sexually frustrated, he was having a bad day. But when black people do it, we some thugs. You better tell it, Dawn. God damn it. We, we, we weren't tell. raised. Girl, I'm about we to We weren't raised dress. with Wait our fathers and our, and our mamas. <laughs> we were raised in a, in a group home. See, it's always an excuse when they go kill up a group of people. We gonna shoot one or two people, but we don't kill, go to the damn uh, massage parlor and kill people that don't do nothing to you. Nothing. So this world got life and bullshit twisted. Yeah, they got it. Life, this this United States of America, these laws, these these congressmen, these senators, they don't do a goddamn thing on the Republican side and the Democrat side. Which is why we have to start voting at a lower level to in the steps. Level. We got to exactly. stop voting in steps you because you get the asses out on the city level, then you work your way up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you, know, you see, have came, no the girl. Girl, you going, came with too much fire today. How I'm you? sorry. Look, oh, no, I'm, going home to, I'm going home tomorrow, so I'm full today. I'm <laughs> going home for a two week break, so I'm I'm, I'm ready. How are your see, parents? This, How are your parents since they took the vaccine? I'm, they good. They are good. I'm going to see them tomorrow. So me and my daddy gonna have us some big crawfish tomorrow. So I can't Come wait. On, crawfish. So I'm excited, but I'm gonna say this, and I'm I'm, I'm not I'm gonna stop throwing so much fire out. There's nowhere in the world. I'm going off subject. That the the uh, the uh, leaders in Georgia, you passing out water to people, and that's against the law. You bunch of clansmen. You are bunch of clansmen. They on payback. They still mad because they, they flipped pissed. Georgia and turned yeah. George blue. Georgia blue. But that's how it's up but, to Congress and the Senate, though. They need to pass this new voting rights bill that they're yeah. trying to craft. So that's they, that's the only way that's going to get overturned. You so. a bunch of clansmen. You a bunch of you a bunch of racist bastards. That's what you are. <laughs> Yes, Well, Dawn. thank you, Don. We appreciate you okay. as always. I'll be in the great state of Texas in the morning. Okay. <laughs> Safe travels. Tell, All right. Tell that, governor in Texas, tell that governor in Texas down there I said to knock it off. <laughs> he can't. He's sitting down. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Don. Bye, Don. Bye, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> mm, child, it's a tangled web. Where we at? Don, you got to go out. Okay. Yeah, she did. There you go, Nick. There you Can are, Can we Nick. talk about this is why we love our flamettes? Seriously, because everybody has uh, uh, an opinion about the different things that are happening right now and don't always have an opportunity to sound off and join. You know we got the smartest <laughs> listeners on the internet. I say that every day. Mm-hmm. You know, we were talking about Congress. Uh, Lauren, should we segue into Kamala Harris, who has been given a lot of responsibility? Uh, it looks like uh, Kamala's profile, in my opinion, is really rising. I have some thoughts about this. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Um, okay. Nothing negative. Nothing uh, negative. Okay, we're not, I'm, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not lighting anybody on fire. No, no, no. I'm not doing that. <laughs> I honestly think, one, I'm glad that Joe Biden is giving her some of these major crises to handle. Um, I think it's only going to help to build her political career because I honestly think Joe Biden is not sure if he's going to run for re-election in 2024. I know that they had a press conference a couple weeks ago and somebody brought that up and a lot of um, uh, contributors on different networks were like, why would you ask, you know, are you going to run for re-election? And of course, Joe Biden said yes, but I'm not totally convinced that he's going to want to run for re-election at 82 years old. I know that 
this was his lifelong dream. This is something he's, you know, finally been able to do. But I think part of the strategy is in the event that he doesn't want to run, he's giving Kamala so many things to build her foundation and her platform on to say, as vice president, look at what all I've done. And this is why I'm qualified to be the leader of this country. That's how I feel. Ooh, if you think they mad, if you think they mad now, ooh, let Kamala Harris become president of the United States. Good God, they're going to start kicking their kids. Jesus, help us. To help. <laughs> That's what I think. I think they're they're trying to they're trying to plan for two different strategies for 2024. I really do. And y'all know I'm going to vote for my soror. So well, my, my, what is my conspiracy theory about that? I love that Kamala is getting a little more juice because Kamala, I've, I've always said, even when I was not team Kamala for president, that she was smart enough not to take a knife to a gunfight. She will go toe to toe with these fools and she is ready for that part. But this country is, is a real funny acting. And a lot of this stuff is looking so public to me. This is my own conspiracy theory. Y'all can fight me if y'all want to. Lauren ain't going to agree with me. I know that. But <laughs> I believe that we see so much of this happening. In what is what is uh, Biden in? 71, 72 days? All of these shootings. And we, we, I believe that they are putting people up to that. Mm-hmm. I know this sounds crazy. So that they can say in 2022 when it's time for the preliminaries that the, the country was safer under Trump's watch. Even though we were having shootings, it wasn't as publicized as it is now. They're really embarking on Joe Biden being the president and looking at all these shootings that's happening while he's in office. So that it'll look like a lot of this stuff happened up under his watch as opposed to Trump's watch. Understand me that there is a method to the madness, and I need y'all to register to vote, especially you people in Georgia. Y'all can't let this bill go get passed. Y'all got to get out and do this because that's taking us back to the dark ages, for real. We got to get make sure that we do not let another Republican get in office until, until we get at least two terms from two Democratic presidents, whether it be Biden and Harris or Harris and somebody else after her. Because if the Republicans get back in because they're grasping at the last little thing, they're trying to hold on to the last little piece of it, to the last little piece of power, the power is leaving fast. Well, I'll I'll say two things. One, I don't totally disagree with you. Um, I think that... Did y'all hear that totally? I don't totally disagree with you. I don't. (laughs) Because that, that in a sense, may be a part of their whole strategy Mm -hmm. because Democrats are all about, oh, we need gun reform, we need gun reform. But the NRA is, you know, bankrolling the GOP. So that may be one of their strategies. I think it's a stupid strategy considering all of the violence and chaos that was created with only in the four years that Trump was there. I don't think that's a very smart strategy. But I don't totally disagree with that's part of maybe of what the thought process of how we can make Joe Biden look bad. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I don't totally disagree with you on that. I will say too, though, I think what we need to pay attention to is yes, there's 2024, but there's also 2022. 2022 is really going to be a pivotal year in Georgia specifically. And that was part of the reason why this new Mm -hmm. modern day, um, Jim Crow bill was passed because Brian Kemp's seat is up next year. And so is, uh, Senator Warnock's. So, Getting a new gov. Oh, and also uh, Keisha Lance Bottom, the mayor seat is up too. So those are three just truly crucial seats that are going to be up for re-election. And if y'all are making sure that black people and people of color can't go out and vote, you're going to get those Republican seats back. You're going to flip the Senate back. So that way it's not going to Kamala is not going to have control anymore. She's not going to be that split vote. It's truly going to be a 50-50 Senate, even with her voting um, the way she wants to vote, whether it's with the Democrats. She can't split any ties. And... In terms of the mayor and the governor, who knows what's going to happen with that. So 2022, next year is going to be a serious uh, turning point for Georgia to see if they stay purple or if they're going to go back to being red. Yeah. Yeah. What, 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 before we get off the subject, because, since we own all of this, what do y'all think about the guy? What was his name? Noah Green that drove his car through the Capitol? Last oh. yesterday, the day before yesterday, yesterday, what was it? What's his he name? Was no, black well, too, right? he was a black. Well, he yeah. was, apparently, supposedly he was a black guy, and they would that. So now here's another conspiracy of mine because y'all do know that I love uh, Reverend uh, a conspiracy theory. Yeah, I love Elijah <laughs> Muhammad. I love the teachings of <laughs> Elijah Muhammad. I do, and I'm not Muslim, but when I hear how he speaks about black men and the empowerment of black women and how you're supposed to adore your family, I hear him talk about family, black 
community, and he says black. He, I don't know if he's anti anything else, but I do know that he's pro black, and he pushes family. He pushes the black man to be the strength and the backbone of the family. Woo woo woo. So he keeps it on that, even though he's always said to respect the women. They're trying to push off to say that this guy was going off of the teachings and the anger and the racism of Elijah Muhammad is why he did that. I ain't gonna believe that all these years ain't nobody drove through. And Muhammad, Elijah Muhammad has said some things that would shake and bake the country. But nobody has ever done that. That's bullshit to me. I don't believe that. And the, and the nigga drove uh, his thing with, with a knife. Uh, again, you don't take a knife to a gunfight. You're going to drive through the Capitol with a knife and no gun. You know what's waiting on you. I don't disagree with that. You know what I was don't. waiting on him? Derek Chauvin because he died. George Floyd ran into Derek Chauvin and he died. I'm calling those police officers that shot that man. Jo Derek Chauvin. <laughs> Uh, I know y'all missed that. Over, that went over y'all here, but I was I was mean as shit. If that was if that sounded mean, it was meant to be. Hi, Lori. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't totally disagree with that. I think that there's it's going to be interesting to see a lot of situations of what was the the intention or where did this come from. You know what I mean? So to have and everybody knows that on the heels of us having these discussions about white terrorism in America and how they've become the biggest threat to us in terms of terrorism. And then all of a sudden you have, you know, this black man that's driving through, you know, trying to drive through a police barricade at the Capitol and he's black and he did it because Elijah Muhammad said it to him. It does make me raise an eyebrow. I'm not going to lie. Um, I am can sometimes be a bit of a conspiracy theorist, but it, the timing is always interesting to me, mm -hmm. and I don't believe that anything is a coincidence. I'm just not, I don't believe that. Can we get RBF so. from you, please? Why? Right in front of the man. They saying that, that he drove through there. Can we get RBF from you, please? Just give it to the audience. Why do you want me to do that? I want RBF, please. Do y'all know what RBF, y'all remember what she said RBF was? What's RBF, Nicholas? I don't know either. Resting bitch face. Yeah, can we get RBF from you, oh. please? Nicholas, do you have an RBF? Let me give you. Let me give you my RBF for how they said this was a wasn't a conspiracy. <laughs> That's the look they give you at the welfare office when they give you your EBT card that day, but Ooh. they tell you they're gonna mail you the pin number in two weeks. Bitch, don't give me your EBT card with thousand dollars on, and then I ain't got the pin number. If you don't know, I'll be at that thing just making up combinations. <laughs> <laughs> Um, <laughs> you are ridiculous. Well, segue, <laughs> Lauren, because Flame, didn't you also get a call this week Ooh. from Ooh. Uncle Sam? Your favorite people. Gonna, you know you love the military, Nick. I'm going to sip my water on that note. So Friday, I got a phone call from some branch of the military. It was the, it was from some officer in the Marines. It was a Marine Corps officer. And uh, he's like, hello, can I speak to Jamarcus? And, I, and he called my phone because Jamarcus had his own phone. I said, well, who's calling? He said this was whatever he said his name was from the uh, from the Marine from the Marine Corps. I said, what are you calling my son for? I said, this is his dad. What are you calling Jamarcus for? He says, um, well, we're reaching out. We're going through the, 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 the records and we're at the school at Sato right now. And we see your son has an impeccable record. We'd like to know if he would be interested in all the opportunities that the military have can afford him. And I said, um, absolutely not. And he says, excuse me, I said, I will not let my son join the military. We are in a time of war. We are in crisis. I would never let my son join the military while we're at war. And he says, um, I'm sorry, sir, but the country is not at war. I said, turn the news on. Watch the Derek Chauvin trial. We are a country at war. Black men are at war with this country with, with, with through the police and just through uh, all this racism. No, my son will never join the military while we're already fighting. And I reminded him of the Muhammad Ali speech that Muhammad Ali said, why would I go fight the Viet Cong in 68 or 69 when I can't get a fair shake here as a black man? I'm fighting you all. When I'm going to go fight Viet Cong, ain't did nothing to me. Y'all doing it to me. Y'all the reason I can't get a loan or get a home or can't start a business or can't get a decent job or get good, good housing. So I always remember, I hit that man with all that. He said, I'm sorry I wasted your time. I said, actually, you didn't waste my time, sir. You wasted yours because my decision was going to be the same no matter what this conversation was. So he hung up on me. It was a good conversation. Uh, <laughs> that bitch won't call back. The army, the navy, he, he wants to serve a few good men. Send them to me. I'd serve them. <laughs> but my son won't. I guarantee you, my son will never join this military. I don't, I'm not trusting the country. Vaccines, shots, nothing else. So let me don't do that because there we go. Uh -huh, mm -hmm. What happened? Because y'all know I don't want to talk about that. No, I, I agree with you. <laughs> and I think that can be the lead into a story that I had brought up to you and Nick. Oh. I know it's old, oh. but I think that it kind of attests to... It's not that old. It's, it's not that old, but I'm saying it's kind of... The, the case has been dismissed. But I think it, you know, is it's a good segue to talk about this six-year-old boy 
that was on his way to school in North Carolina. He literally picked a tulip before getting on the school bus. This white neighbor called the cops and he was arrested. Okay, a tulip, a flower. A flower. A flower. Mm-hmm. And he was charged with uh, destruction of property, of real property, for picking this tulip, just trying to go to school. He was six years old. Neighbor called the police. He was arrested. And they actually put this boy on trial. And it was just sad to read the reports of him sitting there with the defense attorney. And he's six. He couldn't follow the well, the proceedings of what was happening and his legs were just swinging up from the floor and they had to give him a coloring book because he couldn't follow what was happening because he was too young to comprehend like why am I on trial for picking a tulip on my way to school and I mean and eventually the judge once he understood the facts of what happened he dismissed the case but it's calling for a lot of people are calling for reform in North Carolina in Durham specifically because how do you even let it go that far that you really come out and arrest this little boy because yeah. he wanted to pick a flower on his way to school how do you I do that? I completely agree. I completely agree. And I think um, now here's what's funny. I am going to say this. I do have friends who are serious about their lawns and I've known people who like really they put a lot into it. I have one friend who gets upset when he sees neighbors let dogs go on his lawn. I'm like, it's outside. He's like, no, absolutely not. I wouldn't do it on somebody else's lawn. Don't do that. Don't destroy my property. So I do know people who kind of see flower beds as a thing of beauty and all that. I'm, I'm not one of them. I live in an apartment, you know that. So it's not my thing. But I do know that there are people who are kind of serious about uh, the aesthetics of their yard and the and the um, and their agriculture and their uh, the ornamental horticulture of it all. So I do know that there are those who are serious about it. What I don't understand is like um, that. And now it's also had I done it when I was growing up, I think Mrs. Johnson would have came out, maybe slapped me, told my mom. Now you can't do that because you got parents like Flame. Did you hit my child? You, you, you know what I'm saying? So I don't know what you do. Do you call the police? Do you not? What do you do in that situation? I think is the larger question. You see someone damage the property. You don't want to hit somebody else's damage kid. Damage what property? What do you do? I, I, I'm trying to stay with you, Nick, but I'm, I'm, you're losing me on a fucking flower. It's, we're talking about a flower, baby. I don't give a fuck how much you love your yard. It's a flower. The process of them putting a six-year-old baby, Black boy. a baby, through all of that foolishness and then trying to make him look dumb because you gave him a crayon, a color book and a crayon he was not supposed to pay attention that's not something that even supposed to happen in his little young life at six years old whoever the whoever owns that garden and that ain't no about a goddamn garden move to a goddamn island where you ain't got to worry about nobody else coming to fuck with your garden because this is what kids do they see pretty things oh pretty he might have went and picked it because he thought it was beautiful he might have picked it because it was interesting to him but i'm not gonna give them a pass because they so anal about their garden and whoever arrested him the arresting officers, the prosecutors, anybody who even wrote up this trial is this all bullshit. It's fucking bullshit. I said it. Tell North Carolina to call me. I'm coming there anyway. And uh, and Nick, <laughs> I'll say this. I understand, you know, if we want to go the whole people are anal about their yards. This little boy wasn't running through the yard with his feet kicking right? up dirt and grass and turning stuff over. He wasn't doing that. He was literally going to school and just picked the flower. And it wasn't even the owner who I, called the police. I, it was the neighbor. I fucking I totally hear you. Crap. I'm just saying I think I think that that was probably better than her putting their hands on that child because I I think that could have escalated it had I, I'd hate to see what might have happened had they went out and just slapped him like we used to do back in the day. They don't do that like, no more. <laughs> they, don't, they don't do that they don't anymore. Do that no more. I don't know what you do now. Hey, nobody, nobody, nobody would have slapped me or my kids because for I would fuck, I would fuck you up. Let me just let you know. Well, Put I'm, your hands I'm on just saying that. Gonna, yeah. <laughs> I'm simply saying this. I think that there are some who do take destruction of property seriously. I'm not one of them, and I'm not. I'm not advocating that. I'm just saying that when you see someone vandalize the property, I think it's better to call police than to put your hands on that child. I don't know what else you do in that situation. I don't think it would have been okay for them to hit or touch that child. That's, that's all vandalism. I'm saying. Picking a flower is vandalism. Destroying property that's not yours is definitely vandalism. And I mean, that's not even. That's not the question. I think what we're asking is what should have happened in this situation, right? Nothing. Like we they should have let that baby go to school. It's not a big deal that he picked the damn flower before yeah, he got don't on the pick bus. Your, don't pick my flowers out my garden anymore, young man. Don't come over this way no more and just let that baby go. That That is how we would have resolved this. But I would have called, if, if, if you had the call police, they should have requested to have, could you send me a seasoned officer, please? Very seasoned, 30, 35 years <laughs> right. on the force. 
to come and handle this because they seem yeah. to have a different temperament. They seem to know how to de-escalate a real situation. Stop giving Crazy Johnny or the little slow Richard you know, that was in your family that you helped get this job back to that subject again and call them to here because you're going to take it out on my baby that you can intimidate, that you can be aggressive to because they don't understand. They see a police badge they're supposed to respect it because that's how they were raised. Send a bit, let me pick a flower, bitch. Call the police on me. This is what this is what should this is my opinion. This is what I think should have happened. Because if this person was that anal about a damn flower being picked out of a garden, if it was that serious, that neighbor that picked up the phone to call the police, you should have walked your ass across the street, gone to the bus driver and said, Hey, I saw one of these kids that just got on the bus. They picked a flower out of my neighbor's garden. He really shouldn't do that. Can you please I just need to know if he has a parent or something, what school he attends to, because I think this needs to be addressed. You don't pick up the phone and call the cops. You just like that's just not necessary. Hell, if anything, that lady should have um, been cited for uh, what happens when you call the ambulance and you actually don't need it. You have to pay false that alarm. bill. Oh, yeah. yeah, that's what yeah. that should have been a mm -hmm. false alarm that that uh, yeah. that that neighbor should have had to pay because that's just not necessary to do. And if you really feel that adamant about something there's other ways that you can do that especially if you're in a small community everybody damn near knows each other i agree you probably even knew a, a, the parent or something there there was other right. things that you could have done there yeah Child. but we agree under no circumstance do you touch that child though we agree with that right not unless you want to die a slow death <laughs> <laughs> Lord. Okay. wish you would touch my damn okay. child right right i'm no, not even I got a parent you. But you know what? Let's let since we're talking about uh, kids who do bad things, let's talk about the teen girls in DC. Oh, those were the, the ones thirteen that, and fourteen. We project. talked about it. Yeah, we talked about this a little bit last week. Oh, um, I because sad. you know we we've had this. We've gone back and forth before. Like I do believe some teenagers are are, are, are redeemable. Like I I don't believe you throw a. Per but we were talking about you know we talked about Kyle Rittenhouse and we're like no Nick lock him up. 13 and 14, I almost feel like there's something else going on in their life uh, that, uh, that gets you to a point that you're using a taser and, and, and leading to someone's death, that I have to believe that there's room for redemption. I don't know how I feel about that, because I think if you were bold enough to taser a man, and I mean, I never want to, you never know somebody's circumstance, so I don't know what the intent behind it or the reason why they did what they did, but y'all still broke the law, so you can go to jail. Bottom line. Yeah. Audi home. Yeah. And that was what we used to call when we was kids. You going to the Audi home. When you was bad, you went to the Audi home. And they might end up going well, to a detention been, center. They, I mean, I hope, I will say this. They better not try to uh, pro, uh, prosecute those two girls as adults. Because, you know, well, systems like to do that. Well, here we go. The, two, the teen girls were charged with murder, carjacking of an Uber driver. The girls, 13 and 15, assaulted 66-year-old Muhammad Anwar, who immigrated from Pakistan in 2014 to make a better life for his family. They attacked him with the taser while carjacking him, which led to an accident in which he was fatally injured. Uh, both girls are being charged with murder. They killed somebody. They should be. Bottom line. We can't. Yeah. And that's the thing. It's like this is when I say the law should be applied equally across the board, even though it's not. Because are these two girls black? I don't even know. These are two black girls? They are. They are. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I'm sorry, you committed a crime. You need to go do the time. But the thing is, the system is always going to be rigged against us. So I guarantee you that these two girls are going to either be tried as an adult or get at least 10 to 15 years, maybe even 20, because it's murder, first degree murder, right. probably, that they're going to be charged with. Mm -hmm. So, and like you said, then there's somebody like a Kyle Rittenhouse who intentionally went across state lines to shoot people at a Black, a black mm -hmm. Lives Matter protest, and he's out on bail, mm -hmm. and you got freaking uh, House representatives in Florida saying that he should run for, for Congress. So the system is definitely rigged against them. Did they do something wrong? Absolutely. Should they be charged for what they did? Absolutely. But they're going to have to do a larger bid because of it and because of who they are. You have to wonder what kind of lives they live to at 13 and 15 to have enough nerve to do something so outrageous. Yeah. What Hello. kind of trauma have they been through in their in their living arrangement or who have been touching them inappropriately? You know, you don't know yeah. all the story. It's a lot going on. Does that give them a right to go out and do horrible things? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. But they're at such a young, vulnerable age that hopefully somebody will get them proper counseling and talk to them. So when they do get out, they can become productive citizens in society, whatever that's going to mean in the 30, 40 years that they're going to get. Because they're going to get some time. We don't know if Derek Chauvin going to get none, but those girls going to get some time.
mm-hmm. for real. Mm-hmm. And they might be charged as adults too. So they might be going to, you know, prison, prison, not just, you know, a jail detention center type of situation. They're going to end up going to prison. So young ladies, I just want to say this to you, young ladies. <laughs> Look at my ignorant. If you've never been with a woman before, you might pull a Nisi Nash. I'm just saying. <laughs> And on that note, Lauren, <laughs> I think it's Ooh, one of those that's things where terrible. bad flame around. We, uh, <laughs> we we have we have literally covered a little bit of everything, and I want to thank everybody again for constantly sending us topic ideas. I appreciate the DMs, everybody. You know, we try to get through them all, uh, so keep them coming. I Not love me. it. And when I, <laughs> I was just about flame. I was just about to say because flame juggles so many things you guys i'm encouraging it i'm okay with i have turned the alerts off so it doesn't ding all the time but i dedicate an afternoon to kind of go through the dms and answer some of the questions and try to respond so if you have show ideas go ahead and send them to us we're i'm i'm open to that on behalf of the laugh and learn team so there you go so but not flame please Uh, do not he only on he's only on uh on in in tune with that because he's in little rock arkansas (laughs) and six out the seven days of the week all he doing is being there <laughs> calling me 25 times a day flame did you see that no i did not but you'll tell me about it i'm sure because you know i don't read the emails i don't read the inbox i don't uh, let me tell you something the good and the bad i i, I appreciate it i don't see the bad lauren see the bad <laughs> oh i do and i take screenshots and sometimes she'll send me the good because she know i don't want to read that shit i don't <laughs> care what they think i'm not watching them Listen, um, thank you guys for li- watching the audio, the video component, which now drops on Friday nights. We thank you so much. Thank you to our new sponsor. Uh, what was Blue the beer? Moon. Com- Blue Moon Beer Company. Thank you to our team, Kendall and uh, Tribble. We appreciate we could not do this successfully without you all. Thank Seriously. you, Nick Long Distance. Have a great weekend. I hope you guys enjoyed your weekend. Please follow me at uh, Monroe Flame here. Flame Mon- underscore Monroe on Twitter. Uh, where else am I? Oh, Facebook. F- Facebook is a whole damn legal name. Marcus Flame Monroe Parker, which is where the blocked? checks come. No, I'm not blocked anymore. Okay, y'all. That's Facebook where the checks her. come from. And uh, where else am I at? Where else am I at? That's YouTube. pretty much YouTube. it. You worldwide, baby. And you, Flame, you, you worldwide. No, I'm not worldwide. I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm all over the place. And I watch T.S. Madison's show. Thank you, Madison, for the little shout out for you can call me Timothy because he cashed the check and she make the money. That is he, she, we. He cashes the check. She make the money. We spend. Did you see it right there? Uh-huh. T.S. Madison. But T.S. Madison, is it on? Bitches, this so, ain't recorded. So, Nick, <laughs> where, where can we find you? You can find me at Nick Smith News on Instagram and Twitter at Nick Smith News. And I am Lauren Armani H on Instagram as well as Lauren Hogan on YouTube. And and, and on, on Jack Grinder and BGC and Gruff, I am Red and Ready. Yes, that's my name. That's going to be my porn name, Red and Ready. Only fans uh, call me Red and Ready. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. <laughs> Thank you guys for joining us and we will see you next week. Thank you guys. Peace.